Vamos. Love you so much. Your breath smells so bad, but you're the best. Clean up a little bit. What is going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado. My full-time job is selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos about it. Today, I have like 13 items I've gotta get pulled, packed, and shipped out. I need to clean my office. I have a ton of important things to do, but right now, I'm gonna go thrifting. I don't really need anything from the thrift store today. I have a ton of golf clubs I can still list and a ton of other items that I haven't listed yet either, but I'm not feeling super motivated today. So I'm hoping if I go to, I don't know, one or two thrift stores today, find some cool stuff that'll kinda of help me with my motivation for the rest of the day to do some more work. Get my office clean, get some stuff photographed and listed, and just make this a more productive day than I'm feeling right now. Let's see if there's any shoes available. Those pumas are kind of, uh, they're a little cracked on the sides. GTS 17s, those are in pretty good shape. I think I'm gonna grab these. I think those would be good. Walk through the little hard goods section. I haven't, I mean, this Goodwill's pretty good, but I haven't really found anything, you know, crazy here in a while. But they do have, usually they have a pretty good selection of items to choose from. You just gotta know what you're looking for. So the only thing I got in that Goodwill today is this pair of Brooks running shoes. As I've said in previous videos, Brooks shoes are kind of hit and miss. Some of them sell for, you know, 60, 70, 80 bucks. Some of them can't even sell for 20. I think given that these are a more recent model, these are the GTS 17s. You can probably throw them up on Facebook Marketplace. I've had better luck selling clothing and shoes on Facebook than I have on eBay. Uh, and I think on Facebook, they should be able to sell for 30 to 35 bucks plus shipping. These were $6.50, so good amount of profit to be made there. So I'm gonna head over here to the Goodwill Clearance Center, or Goodwill Outlet, also known as the Goodwill Bins. This is where you buy things by the weight. It's a lot of junk in here, basically stuff that should be in the dumpster, but if you're willing to get in here and dig a little bit, you should be able to find some good stuff usually. There's a huge line at the door. I'm not gonna get involved in that. I'll let everybody kind of swarm in as they choose, and I'll just go in afterwards and see what they missed. get into the bottom of this box because it's not cut yet. Keep looking. Oh, look at here.
That is filthy. I'm doing well, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. So I spent a total of $6 on all this stuff. I didn't get anything crazy valuable, but I'm pretty confident that most of this stuff should sell pretty quickly. This next Goodwill usually doesn't have much. They're one of the more overpriced locations in the area, but occasionally they'll have like shoes that are really good, like $100 pair of shoes that they mark up from the regular price of $650 to like 14 bucks, which is still a good deal. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for today among other items as well. Mm. Those are a little, a little bald, a little cracked. The toes, I just don't really feel, feel great. These are just a women's size nine. I'm gonna pass on those. They're just a little too worn for me. These look good. Some New Balance, uh, they're peeling peeling on the toe there. Other than that, they're in great condition. I don't like the peeling. Adidas, those are too dirty. Man. Oh, these Nikes. Those look good. I'll get these. So it's like metal lid, but then on the inside, it's like a Pyrex dish. You can see Pyrex. Pretty interesting. Hand forged. It's four ninety seven, five bucks, but I think it's cool. I'm gonna get it. Just I can't. <laughs> I can't leave them. So in the end, I just got that cool looking pot and the pair of Hoka's. I put that pair of Nikes back because upon further review, they just looked to be in a little bit worse condition than I thought. And upon further review on the Hoka's, I was like, you know, even if they're in kind of rough shape, with little cracks in the uppers and, you know, a, a good amount of wear on the soles, they should still be worth picking up for $6.50. Even in bad condition, you could still sell Hoka's for 25 to 30 bucks pretty easily. So I went ahead and grabbed those. I'm thinking I can get them cleaned up and maybe flip them on Facebook or eBay for 30 to $40 or so. Maybe more, I don't know. We'll see how, how they look once they get cleaned up. So now I'm gonna head to the car wash. Actually, we have a lot of pollen. You guys can see all that pollen on my car. And once I'm done with that, I'll grab some lunch and then head home. I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay. You know, we didn't have any crazy fines at the thrift store today, but I am a lot more motivated now to get some listing and actual eBay work done than I was before I went thrifting. So thanks, thanks thrifting for motivating me to keep working another day. Oh, you gotta, yeah, give me the sock. He always has to have something in his mouth when I come home. Love you so much. So this past weekend, my beautiful wife Haley actually helped me clean up the garage a little bit, just this little center space here so we could have some room to move about. Obviously with all these golf clubs still here, there's just, there's only so much we can do in terms of organization. I did have like a big cardboard box with all of those Xbox controllers in it. And I did get rid of that box and move the controllers up here, but um, I don't know. I just, I'm just not very good at organization. I'm good at finding stuff and selling stuff, but when it comes to organizing it in between those two, that's not my strong suit at all. Hey, Mose. What, what you up to? I did go through part of my death pile this weekend when we were cleaning, and I found this copy of Mario Party 7 for Nintendo GameCube. I got this at uh, Salvation Army, like, 
a month and a half, two months ago, I think I paid like 50 cents for it. And I just like thrown it in a box and the box got covered by a bunch of stuff. So that's like a, I don't know, 60, 50, 60, $70 game. I haven't looked up soul comps in a while, but I was just sitting there unlisted. Like it'll sell fast. Like once I list that today, I'm definitely going to list it today. Once I list it, it'll probably sell within 24 hours for about what I said, 50, 60, 70 bucks or so. Um, so go through your death pile every once in a while, at least just to make sure there's no really good items that are highly profitable and super easy to list. You know, like this is going to take me like two seconds to list. And it was, again, just sitting on the floor covered by a bunch of junk. Let's quickly recap everything that I picked up today. This is everything I got at the Goodwill Bins. Nikon camera bag, nothing too fancy. Probably like 15, 20 bucks, Facebook Marketplace. Got this cool uh, dinosaur from Build-A-Bear Workshop. Don't know his name, don't know how much he's worth, but dinosaurs typically sell between $15 and $25 plus shipping if they're if they're Build-A-Bear brand. Uh, so pretty confident about that. Got this really cool Arizona Diamondbacks baseball hat. I don't know if it's vintage, but it's definitely old. Based on the tag, it's old, but I don't see a, a date or anything. Um, but definitely a cool hat. This other hat is cool, but it's super gross. This is a Ralph Lauren hat. Uh, it's got the leather strap, polo Ralph Lauren. Um, it's, it's in good condition. Again, it's just dirty. So I'm probably just going to throw that in the washing machine or something. You have this cool brass plant stand thing. I think it's a plant stand. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. It might, it might sell for like 15 bucks plus shipping, or I might just keep it because I got a rosemary plant yesterday and I don't have a pot to put it in. So we got the lithium uh, ion battery pack. I'll have to test it with a little voltometer thingy whatever that i have over there to make sure it's not completely dead that it does hold uh, enough of a charge to register and then this will sell for probably like 16 to 18 dollars free shipping on ebay these things sell super fast and then finally last bins is this left-handed thrower ron guidry 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 wilson glove pro special uh, it's a little rough shape, but all the laces are good. I mean, it's it's functional. It's just a little dry and cracked. So we're going to rub it with some leather conditioner uh, and then get it listed. Uh, probably sell for, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks or so. We got just one pair of Brooks running shoes at Goodwill. Paid six fifty for these. These are probably worth like 25, 30 bucks plus shipping. Got that cool pot that I showed you earlier. I don't know. On the bottom, it says something like, it says hand forged everlasting metal. The top is really ornate with flowers and stuff, obviously. And then this is a Pyrex dish inside of it. So just really cool. I have no idea what it's worth. I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, but just too cool to leave behind for $4.97. And then, of course, the last thing I got was this pair of Hoka's, which I don't know. I'm going to try to clean them up, and hopefully I can make some money. Worst case scenario, I don't think I'll lose money. I don't. They're not, like, ripped or torn or have holes or anything. So I definitely think I'll make some money. I just don't know exactly how much. Also got this thing the other day. I found it when I was cleaning the garage. It's a, a glass piggy bank that I got at Salvation Army for $1.99. But what's interesting is that it doesn't have a cork on the bottom. Like there's no way to open this without breaking it. So it's just like you fill it up with coins and then once it's filled, you have to break it. Like you can't get your coins out. I thought that was crazy. I've never seen a piggy bank that didn't have a cork or a hole at the bottom to empty it out. So really interesting. I have no idea what it's worth, um, but super cool. I still got to get those orders pulled, packed, and shipped out today, but I don't want the video to be super long. So I'm just going to show you the couple of things that actually sold to viewers, just so I can give those guys a shout out for supporting the business. The first thing I have going out today is this Florida pillow from my very last YouTube video. I think I paid 50 cents for this, got it listed, and it sold to a viewer named Roxy from Orlando, Florida. She says she has like a camper that she is remodeling into like a Florida mid-century modern vibe type thing. And this pillow, the pillow, this pillow fit perfectly with her decor. I definitely think this is like the perfect pillow for a Florida mid-century modern camper. So Roxy, thank you so much for your support. She paid uh, 20 bucks free shipping for this. Uh, it'll, it's pretty light. It'll probably go first class. If it's close, I don't know. It'll probably go first class. Probably cost like five bucks or so to ship out. So probably making like $13 in profit. So yeah, about 13 bucks in profit. 
Next time I'm going out to viewer is this alarm clock tape deck thing for my last video. I paid $4.97 for this, I think, and it, the tape deck doesn't work. It needs a new drive belt, but it's still sold to a viewer named Greg from, where is he from? He's from Fairmont, North Carolina. So Greg, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. You paid $18 plus shipping for this. So after shipping fees and the cost of goods, I think I'm making like... 13, 12, $13 in profit, not very much, not very much. But uh, if the tape portion were to have been fully functional, uh, they were sold comps for fully functional units up to like 50 bucks free shipping. So uh, learn my lesson, it's still a cool piece. I'm happy I bought it, you know, I just, I love the look of this uh, and I'm happy to be passing it on to somebody else who can appreciate it. Next up, I sold those pair of Kobe Nike shoes from my last video, I paid $6.50 for those and those sold for $35 plus shipping. Sold comps were kind of all over the place, but once I got them cleaned, like with the soap and all that stuff, there were still some like dirty spots on there. So given the condition, I felt like 35 bucks plus shipping was a pretty fair price to ask. And these <laughs> sold to a viewer, uh, Roberto uh, from Ontario, Canada. And he said, me and my brother are screaming with excitement. Can you please give us a shout out on your YouTube channel? My name is Raymer and my brother's name is Ricky. That will make our day if you do. Congratulations on 100,000 subscribers. Now it's time for a quarter million. Can you autograph the box? Uh, so Raymer and Ricky. Thank you guys so much for your support and buying the shoes. I don't know which one of you guys get to wear the shoes, but I hope you enjoy them and I will I will certainly autograph the box uh, and I definitely appreciate you guys watching the channel and supporting me through the viewing the videos and buying stuff from the store. You guys are awesome. Hope you enjoy the shoes. I did sell some other stuff. I got a golf club for 40 bucks, backpack for 25 free shipping, another golf club for 23 plus shipping, head cover for 14 plus shipping that pikachu pikachu from my last video sold for 24.99 plus shipping that was pretty good uh another golf club head cover some nike shoes another golf club some hair hair dye and a pair of shoes i i forgot to i didn't forget i just didn't get around to shipping my stuff yesterday and i think i've already lost my top rated seller status so i'm so sorry that it's a day late shipping this stuff out if you were one of the people that bought for me this past weekend uh, but I'm shipping everything out right now. I'm just not going to put it on camera. What's up guys? It's Josh from two hours further into the future than the last time you saw Josh. I just finished packing up all my orders from today. I usually like packing orders, but some days it's just, it's just a lot, you know, like I had that backpack where'd the backpack go. It's in here somewhere. I'd like, I'd, I'm out of my black plastic wrap. So I had to put it in this box and then that one was too big and I didn't have another box to like slide over the top so i had to get a, a poly bag and tape it and it was just a lot but i'm done and it's over hey loves love you so much top i think i need another ikea bag huh Vamos. Love you so much. Clean up a little bit. He never cleans. So I'm on the way to the post office right now, but I also thought I would take this time to finish out today's video by answering a couple common questions that I'm sure some people in the comments are already going to ask anyway. So the post office is closed for lunch. The one I was going to today, they only have two employees and they both take their lunch break at the same time. I don't know why, but they do. So I came over here to this Salvation Army. I'm going to run in here real fast to see if we can find anything. Then when I get back to the car, I'm going to answer some of those questions I was talking about earlier. That's a nice pair of Chacos here. Pretty interesting design, pretty good condition. These are going to be $6.99. Grab them. Salabria sparkly shoes. $6.99. Definitely going to grab those. Not a bad day at all at my local Salvation Army. I paid $26 even for those four pair of shoes. I got the Danskos, which are in really good condition, just maybe not like a modern style. So that those may take a couple months to sell, but they should sell for 
30 bucks or so, 30 bucks plus shipping. Uh, the Chacos and Keens are in good condition and it's a great time of year to sell those as well. So those should sell pretty quickly either on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. And then the uh, the Allegrias, the Allegrias, those shiny ones right, right there. Um, I think they're like nursing shoes. Sometimes I've seen them sell for like 60 bucks used and sometimes they sell for like 25. So I'm not 100% sure what those exact models will go for, but shiny is definitely in nowadays. So I'm thinking they'll probably sell between 40 and 50 bucks plus shipping just let the post office all my packages are scanned in and anytime I show you guys how I'm boxing up items to ship out or show you guys the packages after they're boxed up like in today's video and I've done something weird like combine two medium mailing tubes to ship a long golf club or shipped a backpack and a 1095 priority box with a poly bag over the top because it wouldn't fit all the way I always get people commenting on the video saying oh I can't believe you you altered a priority flat rate box that's against the rules first of all these are not flat rate boxes. The medium mailing tube is not flat rate. The 1095 box is not flat rate. The only boxes from USPS that, that are flat rate are boxes that physically say flat rate on them. They have, most of the priority boxes they have are non flat rate boxes, meaning that the price is not one price. It's based on the total dimensions and weight and where the item is actually going. I don't care what your local post office employee says or what your friend's uncle's best friend has told you, you can legally alter priority mailing supplies as long as the item still ships priority. You can't alter a bunch of priority boxes together and then ship it with UPS or FedEx. That's against the rules. And you also can't use priority boxes to ship anything first class. But as long as the item is still going priority, you can combine two N95 boxes together. You can combine an, a, a 1095 and a 1092 or whatever it is to ship a guitar here, a guitar. You can combine the medium mailing tubes to ship longer golf clubs. All of that is 100% okay per the USPS website. Also, if you want to get technical, usually people say you can't alter flat rate boxes, which is not technically correct. Based on the USPS website, they do say that if a flat rate box has been altered in any way where it's no longer like the same shape as it is normally, then that would be sent at a regular priority rate. So that's what it says on the website. Now, if you ask an, a postal employee, they'll probably say that it might get sent back to you or they'll refuse it or whatever. So I definitely would not recommend altering flat rate boxes, but if the USPS followed their own rules, you could technically alter flat rate boxes as well. I got my eBay shipping supplies delivered today. I used my eBay coupon. If you have an eBay store, you get a coupon every quarter for free shipping supplies. And I used mine to get bubble mailers. Moz, hey, oh, did you bring me a sock? Oh yeah, you did, and you dropped it, but that's okay. Love you so much. Oh, you gonna get it? No, you don't have to get it. You can get it. Okay, thank you. Another question I get asked a lot is how I clean shoes. I've said this multiple times and I've showed it in probably 20 videos, but I still get asked probably at least once a day. So I use this stuff, OxyClean Max Force Stain Remover. It comes in this little sucky pin thing, also in some spray bottles. It's super cheap. It's like five bucks on Amazon. It works great on pretty much any, any type of shoe. I wouldn't use it on like leather shoes, obviously, but uh, pretty much any other type of shoe that works great and i use a like a grout brush like this right here something like that uh maybe not metal this is like a brass tip but you can use like a nylon just where's like a charm another thing that isn't really a question i get asked a lot but my dog's name is mose as most of you probably know and he's talked about in my youtube comments a lot so people spell his name and i've seen his name spelled all sorts of ways i even jokingly said in a live stream one time that it was spelled like m-a-u-s-z-e or something ridiculous and one lady actually spelled it like that and she was like yeah that's what you said in the live stream i was like no i was i was joking it's fine uh but just so you know for future reference this is how you spell my dog's name m-o-s-e like nose with an m he's named after dwight's cousin on the office mo's like the little amish weird guy in the office but he's the best dog in the world and now you know how to spell his name M-O-S-E, right Mos? And finally, for the end of today's video, I went to my P.O. box today and I had a postcard in there and a package that says open on camera upside down. So I'll have to get upside down later, but the postcard is from, I think, Le Lelona Mills? Le is that, is that Lelona? I'm so sorry, but Lelona uh, Mills from, uh, uh, let's see, Fayette, Alabama? Fayette, Alabama? That's Fayette, Alabama Courthouse. Thanks for reading the postcard. I appreciate it. 
Now for this package, I don't know what's in here, but I do know who it came from. It came from my friend Chris Stonier, who goes by Rollin' With Stones, I think, on Instagram and YouTube. So let's go ahead and get this opened up here. If I can find something to open it with, that should work. I need something sh sharper than a wrench. Dang, Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm super excited. Okay, we got some Pokemon cards here. We got a card. Oh my gosh, Chris. It's a Shining Fates booster box, baby. For those of you that don't know anything about Pokemon, this is super freaking exciting. And it said open on camera, so I have to open this. Okay, let me read the card. You did it. Thanks, Chris. Let's see, let's see. Josh, congratulations on catching all 100K subs on YouTube. Get it? Catching all like Pokemon? It was it was fate, like Shining Fates, the Pokemon, because you've been a shining... Man, Chris is just loaded with just wordplay today. Example to our reselling community. Here's to a 900K more, a million total. Well, maybe one day, Chris, maybe one day. Harry Tornado, I choose you and 99,999 others. Love you so much. Uh, March 28, 2021. Congratulations, your friend, Stones. Thanks so much, Chris. I really appreciate that. The card is so sweet, and the Pokemon stuff is even sweeter. Now, it's equally sweet. If I'm going to be completely honest, the Pokemon stuff is way better than a card, but I definitely appreciate the card. Okay, should I open all this right now? Yeah, I'm definitely going to open all this right now on today's video. So if you guys are watching this and you are not interested in seeing what's inside these Pokemon packs, feel free to like this video and drop a comment that says, Pokemon sucks, reselling is awesome, and I love you so much. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. I don't know what I'm looking for in these packs, but I'm sh I'm sure if we see something cool, then we'll look it up. Got that. This is a Sword and Shield Battle Styles. So let's see what's in here. Okay, there we go. A little corner off. It's got the white code card. I can't read any of these backwards. And that thing. And that thing. Ooh, that's a cool looking one. What is this? Okay. Ooh, a reverse holog holographic that. And then, oh wait, then. Oh, what is this? An Ur, Ur Shifu V Max? That's probably a pretty good card. If I had to guess, I'd probably say it's like a $5 card. That's pretty good. Oh, and an energy. This thing's super cool, man. Oh, hey, Moe's. Focus on the card, not on Moe's. Come on, camera! Focus! That thing, cool card. I don't have any sleeves. I don't, I don't have any sleeves, so I'm just gonna gently place it up there. All right, so that was a cool card. Uh, let me move these over here. Next up, Sword and Shield, Rebel Clash. Rebel Clash. Rebel Clash. Let's open it up. Let's keep keep it moving. Growlithe Derbler. Uh, uh, that thing. And this. Is this the rare card? This is the rare card. A Diggersby. Onto this thing. What is this? Vivid Voltage! This is a Vivid Voltage set. I know. I know. Not a set. It's a Vivid Voltage pack of cards. Ugh. But I know the Pokemon in this set. Okay. Gently. Gently. Okay, we got we got those two up there. Those are cool. All right, vivid voltage. Here we go. Whew. I'm nervous. Okay. 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 Making some progress here. And then this is reverse holographic spider thing. And then an El Electros. That's a rare card. Not worth. Not worth much a couple couple bucks maybe so far no home runs but now we can get into opening the shining fates elite trainer box super super freaking pumped man let's go get this packaging out of here i think i'm gonna just quickly google search to see what cards i should be looking for in this set that way i know if i should get excited or not okay so i'm gonna spin you guys around there's this charizard okay that is the card we're looking for. You can see eBay, eBay sold comps right there, $390 and one cent. If we can find that card, 
in this box. So obviously there are other cards that are like 20, 30, 40 dollar cards, but the Charizard V Max is definitely gonna be the one that we are looking for. So let's go ahead and use a golf tee to open this. All right, the best part about the ETB is that we have 10 sealed booster packs of Shining Fates cards. In one of these packs could very well be the Charizard VMAX that sells for $390. I've had some pretty good luck opening Pokemon cards in the past, so let's see if that luck continues today. One, two, three, four. Water Energy. Blank, blank. Again, the last card. If the Charizard is in here, it's going to be the very last card we get to. Bam. Bam. And what is that? What is that? Focus. What is that? A more Pico? More Pico V Max? What is a more Pico? It's more Pico V Max. eBay. $5, baby. $5 card right here. Okay, we got a code card. Why are these... I j literally just opened it, and half of them are facing one way, and the other half are facing the other way. That's not... That is not normal. Yeah, no Charizard. No, the rare... Oh, the rare is Zerud. Zerud is the rare card. Can you freaking see that? Freaking zoom, man. Zerud is the rare card. I don't know, that was weird, the way they were switch swapped. So, nothing in there. Eight packs left. Opening the next seven packs, I did not find anything of any interest or value, so let's just go ahead and move on to the last pack, just for the sake of time. Last pack. Last pack. Let's rub it for good luck. And, oh, that was it. That was, that was a rare card. This did you. This did you. So, unfortunately, we did not find one of the ultra rare Charizards. However, I did make a mess. And I also had a lot of fun. I love opening Pokemon cards. You're not going to find great, you know, super rare cards every single time you open packs, but just the process of going through with that little glimmer of hope makes it so much fun. So huge shout out to Chris Stonier, also known as Roland with Stones on Instagram and YouTube. Chris actually goes by my boy Stones on Instagram and Roland with Stones on YouTube. Chris, thanks so much for sending me this stuff, man. It was awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I definitely appreciate your time. If you enjoyed it at all, take a couple seconds and hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and I'll catch you on the next one.